There we go. I think I've got it. <laughs> it took me a minute here to get this set up here. Uh, okay, as you can see here, am I? can you all hear me? Uh, am I still going? <laughs> You can see here, uh, we were talking about the tags and stuff like that. Uh, you can see here on the screen, this is the way I do my titles. You can see I got, uh, I filled out as many of these as I possibly could. All the way to the end. We, we covered that pretty good over there. Uh, this is a little more advanced than what we were talking about. This video here happens to be 25 minutes long, so I broke it up into chapters. That's what all this stuff up here is. You put these timestamps in, and uh, what it does is it gives people the opportunity to skip around in your video. It's another little trick to make people watch it if it's a longer video. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. You can see I filled out my description as much as I possibly could, put every keyword I possibly could think of in there. Uh, like me and John were talking about the little shout out because I wanted Jim's, if it ain't broke, fix it to see this. I buried it down here in my description. So that at doesn't take up any space up here in my, uh, title. Okay. That's all that. And there's my thumbnail options. You can see why I don't choose the YouTube standard ones. Those are stupid. <laughs> Well, what I wanted to cover here, here we go. These right here are the tags, not hashtags. They're just tags. These are what we call the hidden tags. And you can see all of this stuff here. These are all the key words that I can throw in there that anybody typing in on the computer can find me. You can see I type my name multiple ways and different little things. That's actually the me and my dad's company there, B&B Rats and Rods. So if we're at a car show and somebody sees B&B Rats and Rods, that's us. Hey, Brian. Hey, what's up? Hey, you, you're going to come in and join me on all this, huh? Man, that is yeah. good looking motor right there. <laughs> well, you can see where I stick all my hidden tags. And if you have two, buddy, uh, I have the paid version, the one step up. It gives you all these options of tags that I can put in there. What they are is just keywords that somebody would type in to find you. They're, they're kind of they're kind of like words in your description or your title that aren't actually there. The algorithm picks them up. Anyway, I'll fill all of these out. And, well, because I got two, buddy, it's real easy. That gives me all kinds of options. Gives you some options that are just off the wall crazy. <laughs> Barn find cars and off-road and off -road outlaws. That, that one doesn't apply at all, so I won't use that. But, anyway... When we was talking to 6% about that, on how he can get his name more recognized, that's how I was able to do it. So people wouldn't come up with all that gardening crap as I put it in that way, that way, that way. All the ways you can e even the right way to spell it. Now, where do you get that to, buddy? Uh, it's, you just download it. It's a... Uh, You're free? Uh, you yeah, I just... Googled it. I started with the free version. It gives you the uh, thumbnail generator, and it's super easy to use. It's beyond idiot proof because <laughs> I can use it. <laughs> hmm. That's something I might look into. And it's totally free. Uh, the paid version, some of the stuff on here is it gives you a title generator. I've used a couple of them, of their title generators. You type yeah. in something in the title, and then you click that button right there, and it'll kind of AI combine your title with other ideas 
and it gives you a whole list of them to choose from. But that's on the paid version. The free version just gives you the thumbnail generator. And on these hidden tags, it gives you like four, three or four, instead of all of these hundreds of them. But you can get around that with the free version. All you got to do is keep refreshing it, and it changes those three choices. <laughs> That might be something I might want to look into. It's helped me a bunch, a whole bunch. Just speeding things up. Well, yeah. And sometimes their title generator, sometimes it comes pretty dang close. Mm -hmm. But that's where that is. And like I said, yeah. Fill out your description. I, I see so many channels that don't do a description, and that's how the algorithm works. It starts on your title, just like this, starts at the first word and reads all of these all the way across. Then it drops down to your description and it reads all of those all the way down to the bottom. It's looking for any words that people type into that search box right up here. To throw your video out. But I hope that helps everybody out there. That's a little bit that I wanted to. There, now I can see everything. When I do the share screen, it blocks the whole thing. I can't see the chat. I can't see nothing. <laughs> so I don't do it very often. <coughs> I'd like I like that you guys said something about doing the lives too, because yeah. for new people. The lives really aren't going to help you out a whole lot. Nah. The lives will get you once you get going, and once you get close to a thousand and stuff. I mean, if you did, if you just like doing them, that's what I did. I just started doing them because I like doing them. Oh yeah, if you like doing it, just go for it, do it. But you know, don't think you're going to pick up subscribers from it because even. Yeah. Even you pick up subscribers by going on other people's lives. Yes, that is the key. You go to somebody else's live who's got a bunch of subscribers. And yeah, you'll pick up some there. But yeah, I mean, I, well, you know me, I've been doing a lot. I just haven't been doing them lately, but I was one of the first people to start doing lives. Like, like the first before. live I was ever on was yours. Yeah. I think it was when right I was after the announcement. I was doing that. I was I was wanting to help the no name the no name guys get their subs. That's why I that's that, that that's why you were on that block. I just haven't been doing it a whole lot lately, but I'm gonna start back up. Yeah, true, Mike. Once you get rolling though, and once you get an audience going and everything's you, you've stepped over that, like I said, a thousand. Once you've stepped over that thousand mark, then it starts working for you. But in the yeah, beginning, the last one gives you watch hours. You come right out of the gate with a live, it's going to be kind of tough. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I've had, I've had, I've never had a thousand subs. I'm at nine, nine twenty four right now. And but I've had four thousand watch hours on three different occasions because of all the lives I used to do. Oh yeah. And if you're pushing for watch hours, yeah, lives. That uh, this <laughs> Yeah, just ask Tony at uh Tony's hot rod garage. That's how he got his, just got his. Um well he did his first live. You missed did he tell you you missed out? Uh oh. Did I miss it? The uh, Friday. Yeah, you missed out on being his first super chat. Oh, son of a gun. Let's <laughs> see what happens when I get busy. I can't remember <laughs> who got it. Hey, Sidewinder, what's going on? Great to see you, man. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? Can you hear Ain't me that all right? A pretty looking Mopar right there that Brian's working on. 
Oh man, yeah, that is nice. See that what your three eighteen nice. could be. <laughs> <laughs> the three, yeah, the three eighteen is still in pieces. That's 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 in the back of the shed. That's uh, that's waiting on something else. If I can ever get a body to put it in, uh, and I'm still waiting on. You look identical. Well, I'm still I'm still waiting on time and and uh, and a second vehicle to get that purple 360 in the old truck. Oh, purple! Oh yeah, oh you yeah. Can tell I don't like purple. Well, so does the wife. That's why it's purple. You know, I got the brownie points. I spent so much, so many weekends and so much time after work out in the shed putting that thing together. Uh, I had to get the brownie points somehow. I'm installing purple sparkle wire separators right now. Oh boy, Chris, Chris, that is one cool looking machine you got there. Thank you. What's the body again? Oh, yeah, you can turn that on if you want, Kieran. 47 Dodge. 47 Businessman's Dodge. Coupe. Oh. Sitting on a one ton. Dodge frame. With the Cummins. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That is too doggone cool. That's why I tell everybody, don't worry one bit about wheelbase. Wheelbase is the easiest thing to change. You got it, you got it cut right in there good. I'll tell you what, I I I do envy you guys that can that can do manufacture or, or um oh can make things. I mean, you know, do the body work, do the framework. I can't even I can't even stick weld. And trust me, I've tried. <laughs> I have my problems with body work. Ah, That's I'm cool. allergic to body work. Oh. I got I have a good friend of mine, Doogie. He is uh oh, he's an excellent fabricator and everything. And uh personally, I like working with wood. He hates working with wood. I can't stand working with metal. And although the techniques and everything, measurements, everything, a lot of it is very similar. Transposers. Yeah, but he can't stand working with wood. He hates it. I can't stand working with the metal. I just, I, it, it's weird how your mind works sometimes. Is that well, what you it? Is, the problem with wood is you don't have a machine where you can just add more back on like you do with metal. That's what, that's what he keeps telling me. That's what he keeps saying to me. And you know my 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 thing is too. You know I've told him five or six times. Look, Doogie, I measured this thing four times, and I keep cutting it and cutting it, and cutting it, and it's still too short. <laughs> What's that one, Chris? Chris, I'm not sure what this thing really is, but. One thing I did figure out is it was painted red before it was painted yellow. So maybe it has some type of history to it. I don't know. But this is something that I just acquired from a clean out, you could say. Oh, really? Heck, the wheels are worth something there. <laughs> That's what I said. All the fabrication <laughs> work alone, oh, a lot of time and money was spent. <laughs> And if I was going to use it, it would be safe, right? Because of the fact that, you know, the roll cage is a 110 point. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I always wanted these Ooh. rims that look like roller bearings. That's but. a shortened up nine inch. Ooh. Has it got the carrier in it? I don't know if I can get up here right now. Looks like a 70. <clears throat> it's that missing generation of. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like your choke pull off. <laughs> yeah, that brings back memories, doesn't it? I remember doing that an awful lot. I finally got the trunk open. Boy, like I said, somebody put a lot of time and money into making it i guess yeah 
What year is that? I think 71 or 70, somebody said. Mm, okay. Just like needs new rubber. It had 32s on it. 71 to 73. They're the true second gen Camaro. Yeah, I still like the I still like the seventy eight through what was it eighty two? Third gen. Yeah, I with with the they plastic. call them second gen. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they use the second. I like the plastic nose ones. That's the door is still open. Ooh, that's good looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I've, I'm getting interested in looking at this Camaro. I, <laughs> I, I originally hopped in here to talk about those uh, the live streams and everything. And uh, one of the things is uh, I know I don't usually uh, advertise or tell anyone I'm going live. I just kind of hop on. Uh -huh. But it was like you were saying, Barrows. It's just because, well, most of the time, I'm left unsupervised without anything else to do. And so I do it to enjoy myself. You know, I just do it because I like it. And Oh, you keep doing it then. Yeah, Go for it. That's it. I mean, I think I think the most people I've ever had watch one of my live streams was like five. You know, because nobody knew it was on. Now, afterwards, you know, an hour or two later, I will get inundated with uh, all sorts of either comments or even uh, those that, uh, that know me. It's like, how come you didn't tell anyone? I missed it again. I missed it again. I missed it again. Well, it's, it's a spur of the moment thing for me. And I just, sometimes I just enjoy getting on. And Bear Rose, you should know this. I can babble. <laughs> I, I, I can talk about nothing for no hours. No way, man. And, no way. Yeah. <laughs> Driver's responsibility. Check oil, check water, huh? <laughs> and don't forget to drain the water. Oh, back when back back when I first started, I we we would have more people in the live talking than watching. It was just like oh yeah, hang out. It was fun. And and that, that really is the secret of this YouTube stuff. You gotta have fun. It it, it you know if it's not fun, don't do it. Don't do it thinking you're gonna make money. That hasn't even crossed my <laughs> mind yet, <laughs> and I've been doing it for two years. That not not even crossed my mind. But uh, you that, can. I, mean, I yeah, won't I lie to you. You can, but if you want to do it in that aspect, it is a job, and it's yeah, a twenty four seven, three sixty five day job. Yeah, I'm I'm not ready for a second job yet. I'm still just having fun doing <laughs> doing the little things that I do and all the different uh, subjects. You know, um, you you can't come to my channel and just expect me to do Mopar or even um, car stuff because I'll, I'll do woodworking. I will do uh, cooking. I'll do uh, cast iron, care and maintenance, and you know all sorts of stuff. Camping, everything. The way I look at it, this. This is stuff when we were kids, Barrows, that we used to hate and go see, go over to our uh, friend's house or even our family's house and have to sit there and watch their home movies. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm making home movies, basically. <laughs> and everybody's watching them. Yeah, that, that is the good thing. That is the good thing. People are, are wow. watching it and they are getting engaged. What and, do they call uh, those Jeeps? A J-10? There's a guy here in Idaho Falls that's got one. It's bright yellow. He goes by the purple nurple. And Philip, I, I want to come visit you. To the holidays you your yard. around in. I haven't seen one of them in years. <laughs> I just went to the Bear Road, but I had to drive through Wyoming, and I absolutely hate Wyoming. <laughs> oh, man. The worst thing is I-80 when you're going from, when you're traveling west, coming home from the no-name nationals right at September because the sun sets right on that freeway. Oh, man, I was so blind by the time I hit 
the Rock Springs. Oh, and it's a straight road. <laughs> we were driving from uh, Northern California back to um, St. Louis. And I can't remember what time. I, th I think it was for Thanksgiving. And we had been in Florida, Arizona, California for months. We hadn't seen snow. It, 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 basically a whole year. So we're driving back and we're driving through Wyoming and it's like, oh, wow, look, there's snow. And as soon as the sun went down, that snow on the side of the road turned into a foot of blown snow. On oh, the yeah. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> there's times you go down I-80 and you see semi trucks laid over on the side of the road. That's especially triples usually they catch those guys in laramie and hold them up because it, it'll blow them right over because there ain't nothing out there absolutely nothing the sagebrush is only about four foot tall because that's as tall as it can get like driving through west west texas but with snow <laughs> <laughs> and cold good god wyoming's cold Years ago, you know, I'm a truck driver and years ago I used to run coast to coast and don't get me wrong. I love Texas, but I hated driving through Texas because I'd be headed out to California. And back then the speed limit, national speed limit was 55 miles an hour. The truck I, yeah, the truck I was in would only do 63. And New Mexico was just as bad. New Mexico just seemed to be two hills. You spent half your time going well, again. Up and half your time going down and but you get into texas and it's like all right i'm not that far away from california three days later you're getting out of friggin texas <laughs> well when we went to texas the speed limit was 80 on i-10 and that was nice the when only we time driving, we were driving a commercial vehicle and our boss was and we so we had to stick to 80 and our boss was driving just a, uh, a company car. So he's going like 95. <laughs> he calls us. He calls he, he calls me on the phone. Because you, well, you've obviously driven through West Texas. He's like, I just saw a goat. And that was like a big deal because there ain't nothing to see out there. <laughs> so we're like, we're like, oh, wow. And about an hour later, we saw this goat standing on the side of the highway. He didn't move. Oh, but man. the only thing I could think is, what are you eating, Mr. Goat? There ain't nothing out here to eat. 14 and a half acres, huh? I'd love to. I could fill it up with birds. <laughs> Got plenty of birds. <laughs> How is everybody? Not too bad. How you been, Philip? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Good to see you, Sidewinder. Good seeing you, sir. Good seeing you. And yeah, double I'm, D's garage. <laughs> I I'm love still that. Hanging, I'm still hanging in here. I managed to drop a tree in my backyard and nobody got hurt or killed. So that yeah, was a good yeah. thing. Hey, there's a plus. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, it didn't, didn't quite go the way I thought it would, but fortunately, the fence that me and the neighbor put up is very sturdy. It caught that tree. Yeah. That's just yeah, I just want to chime in for a minute to talk about uh, 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 with Bear Rose uh, and uh, Wilburn talking about, the, you know, some of the things to help people with the get uh more subs and more views and that kind of stuff and it was interesting i really enjoyed it uh oh, thank you for me uh it, it's not about trying to get the most people it's about trying to get the right people <laughs> okay. that, that, that's true and i'll tell you what this community here that i i was talking about this with uh one-eyed cat earlier today that uh these guys here, you you guys, everybody I've met in this community, I, they, I can't say enough about them. They're just awesome. They're willing to help everyone. 
Yeah. Um, they're just they're great people. Yeah, they're awesome people. And uh, uh, Bear Rose, he even uh, mentioned last week how he came across my channel. It was just a freak thing, you know. Yeah. And I've experienced that kind of stuff. Uh, I've been watching YouTube for years now, and have really never wanted to get involved and make a bunch of videos. But uh, at one point, you start to make friends. You oh, know, yeah. You, you, oh, you yeah. send comments, and you just start making friends with people. And that's kind of how I treat it, okay? Yeah. I don't care if I've got 10,000 subscribers. I really don't care. I'm happy with the 138 that I've got. You know, because that's <laughs> that's 100 more than I thought I'd ever get. Because my yeah. content is nothing great or creative. Yeah. Uh, sure it is. I like to I like to employ a lot of humor in, in what I do, and I try to brighten a person's day, or at least a, a, that's what I think I'm doing, and that's what I strive for. I just try to make people happy, and uh, but with that being said, uh, uh, how I come across all of these people, like like what's on this screen right now, is that. Uh, uh, we're just like-minded individuals that would rather just sit and shoot the breeze just as if we were sitting inside of a garage, you know, and yeah. sharing yeah, stories and showing what we've got, this kind of thing. That That's it exactly. My brother-in-law is sitting beside me. He can hear, which is a good thing, though, because I'm deaf in this year, and I had no idea he could hear the damn computer. But um, I've got two of those he, heaters. He was, he was just sitting here. Uh, going, yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, sir. He's like, that's what we used to do growing up. And then down here with the gentleman that uh, sold me my truck, we were always over sitting in his garage and tinkering on stuff and just, just talking about everything. And you, you're absolutely right, Philip. You nailed it on the head there. That is what this reminds me of. Yeah. Just guys hanging out, talking shop. Yep. 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 Yeah, and with the older older gentlemen, like we hung around with me and my uh, brother-in-law, the life stories, the life experiences, yeah. everything that they would pass on to us. And now that they're, they're gone, it's our turn to try and pass it on as well. You know, I owe a lot to my father and my grandfather for a lot of the things that I did in my life and the experiences and the knowledge and the skill level that I've achieved. And uh, and they're gone now. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah. uh, I don't have any sons to share that with. So I'm going to share with people out here on social media. And, you know, granted, it might be something that seems rather silly or insignificant to some. I, I, uh, I know uh, <laughs> I have no women audience. You know, uh, <laughs> unless I start welding in my underwear, maybe I'll pick up a few, <laughs> you know. That, that may not have the desired effect that you want. <laughs> yeah, I might get shut <laughs> off from this YouTube oh. thing. But let me tell you this. Here's what's, here's what's interesting. I got a message from YouTube saying that I was flagged for hate speech. Now, and then they even gave me a specific. So I went back and checked it out, and there was no hate speech in the video. I used the word hate mm. when I said, oh, I hate it when this weld comes out looking like this, something like that. Well, you got to be careful. You got to mind your P's and Q's on this forum. Yeah, yep. it's, it's sad that we have to do that. Yep, yep. You know, my big thing is it's sad. To me, it's sad that people can't just take a joke anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It is. And uh, to some yeah, extent, I'm just not going to go there. Like not, not, today, a little. not on this show. I'm not going to go if there. If your language does get a little excessive, uh, what they'll do is they'll, they'll age restrict you. Yeah. So you got to be over 18 to watch it and all of that. Yeah, I've had I've had a few of my videos. Like in the first eight seconds of a video, 
I just make my introduction nine seconds long because I never know when I'm going to cuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say I'm a truck driver. Oh, you know, Brian, not, not no. be, you've not got be the best serious. outro of anybody on YouTube. Like, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> if you don't like it, I don't give a click and you shut it yeah. off right there. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Did like you that. notice this bear rose? Can you see yeah. that? What's that? Do you notice this right here? It's a little preview for your viewers only. <laughs> I'm gonna be putting I'm gonna be putting A N line for my radiator hose. Oh, there you go. Dash oh, sixteen wow. A N line. That's a big old A N fitting on there. That's yeah. that A N you was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Good night. That thing's huge. I got one down here. It all started because when I used this pulley and this water pump, it was going to interfere. The pulley was going to hit the belt. So I was figuring out ways to get away from that. And yeah, it's expensive, but I found Where? a way to get away with it. Where the heck did you come across those? There's a company. When I do the video on it, Oh, okay. It's gonna be in the next couple of next next, I guess, three four weeks. Once I get everything else I need, I'm gonna do a video because this is on a run stand right now. This is a run stand. Jet cool. got a speed shot built this morning. It's a real small, compact run stand. I really like it. But I gotta put I gotta a radiator on one of them. But um. Yeah, I'm gonna do a I'm I'm gonna do a video on the, the AN fitting. That'll be cool. In um radiator host. I've never oh, had a, seen an AN fitting that big. JIC I have. There's uh well there's actually a dash twenty that's bigger. <laughs> uh, I I just love the idea of AN fittings because they don't leak. It's steel braided. It's going to take a lot to blow it, you know? Uh huh. So I'm actually thinking about, like, because I've got my satellite coming, I'm thinking about doing this on that, and that's going to be more of a daily driver. So I'm going to use a bigger hose because the uh, Dash 16 is one inch. Yeah, which, that's pretty. Did you know this? Okay, friend you, daily. My friend picked yeah. this I'm gonna drop some knowledge that I that me 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 and my guy a friend at work figured out. You know the dashes on the AN fittings. You've got like dash four, dash uh -huh. dash six. That number is one sixteenth of an inch, and that's the True. hose that I use. Because the dash, dash eight will be half inch. Yeah, dash eight's half inch. Dash six is, is uh, three or uh, uh, three eighths. Dash sixteen, which what I got here is one inch. Yeah. I never, uh, I, I didn't know that. We 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 were talking we, about the AN fittings and we figured that out. The AN stands for Army Navy. Yeah. yeah. It was a special fitting designed for the Army and Navy, and with me sitting right here, smack dab in the middle. Of the Air Force and the Navy, I can get them fittings all day long. Just not yeah, that big. That red and blue, can't you? Where did the original one red and blue? Yeah. When they well, it was all anodized, and uh, they they were only came in two colors, and that stood for hot and cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter what it was. But listen, Rose, uh, I like to. Uh, Talk about that truck that you uh, that you alluded to last week, and some of the stuff that I saw where you were doing it like an old fighter aircraft. That is just cool. Yeah, that was my. Uh, it was a forty-eight Ford cab sitting on a S ten ninety four S ten chassis that I Z framed. That's how I lowered it. That's how I dropped the body down. Is right. I cut the frame, and in the middle dropped it and then stacked the frame rails up on top of it again so all my steering geometry all my rear end geometry stayed stock it was just the belly of it boom, dropped down and then i stuck a 46 ford coupe nose on it 
that's yeah. the fenders and everything. Yeah. And then I, I dug that old Studebaker, 52 Studebaker pickup bed out of a collapsed potato pits, uh, cellar. <laughs> 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 Took almost all day to dig all of the old posts and everything off of it and stuck it up on there. And I was powering it with a 200 straight six. Oh, really? I, wanted to, I wanted it to sound like an airplane. Right. You know, you mentioned in that, I, I want to talk about two things real quick. Comments about what you just said. One, I used to have an old Triumph motorcycle. Same here. Right. And I've had Same a couple of them, actually. Same here. And uh, the one that I had, I had the Trident, the very rare three-cylinder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And when you throttle up on that thing, it sounded like one of the old British airplanes. It sounded like a big, it sounded like a 200-pound bullfrog. You'd hit the throttle <laughs> and it'd just go, brah, 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 you know? And it always reminded me of those old World War II aircraft, the way it sounded, you know. But uh, secondly, I I really dig how you're trying to make it look like one of the old warbirds. And uh, I just wanted to mention uh, real quick for anybody that's watching that if you get yourself a chance to come down here to Pensacola, Florida, you got to go over to the Naval Air Museum. It is the best display of naval aircraft that you've ever seen. And uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's what's really cool is they'll show an aircraft and then sitting right next to the aircraft, they'll have a cutaway of the engine that's in the aircraft. You see, so you, and, and a lot of them are working models. You know, oh, yeah. so that you can see how they were built. I couldn't believe that they actually had overhead cam V8 engines and aircraft that predate World War II. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, actually, I'm, I also went to school. I'm an A&P mechanic, uh, airframe and power plant. I worked on aircraft. Right. And uh, have, you, have you ever seen an R4360? It is a 28-cylinder uh, radial uh, engine. And right. uh, I, I, I've, I've actually worked on them. The, uh, the super, or well, the guppies, not the super guppy, but the guppy, which uh, it, it, they used to carry parts for NASA, but now they mostly carry the uh, Sky Crane helicopter, those those big, huge helicopters, coast to coast, and um, it it was amazing because uh, they came into a place uh, I was working at. I was working at Beechcraft Aircraft at the time, and. Uh, talking to the pilots that said it was nothing for them. It was very common for them to blow two or three cylinders off each engine every time they flew the thing. Yeah. And I, I, and they I still mean, run. yeah, and they still run obviously because they landed, came in and everything was fine, but they, we had to replace two cylinders on one of the engines. Yeah. He said that was real common and uh, they have a dry sump oil, oil system. Oh on my them. God. Yeah. And what they do well, they is they, you well, yeah, they the bottom. Each engine has two 50-gallon drums of oil sitting next to it that it draws the oil from. And uh, going from um, basically about halfway across the United States, they will empty out those 55-gallon drums on each engine. They, they, they'll go right through that oil. Of course, it, it don't help if you're missing two cylinders and you're blowing it all over. The place too. <laughs> right. They just turn into pumps. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's about it. You Sidewinder, you speak of that engine. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, but also, uh, down here at the Eglins Air Force Base, they have the uh, Air Force Armament Museum. And inside there, they've got a cutaway of an old radial that I think is a like a seven-cylinder radial. Like a Pratt that is Whitney? like uh, four uh, stacks long. To make like twenty eight cylinders. Yeah, yeah, that would be an R forty three sixty. That's the only uh, four stack, uh, seven uh, yeah. cylinder engine. Yeah, uh, four yeah. rows. And they seven. do that in a cutaway, so yeah. that you can see how the thing works. It's cool as hell. Oh yeah, and if if you if you're standing next to that engine in real life, 
you're like this thing is huge it's about the yeah. size of my sh my my yeah. back porch here yeah i mean the, yeah. it's it's longer than my truck and eight <laughs> cylinders <laughs> like a liter you know inside oh, yeah, it's huge well 4360 is it's 4360 cubic inches cool yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. And then, uh, well, one of the most popular engines they had during World War II was the uh, uh, R2800, which they called the uh, Super Wasp, which was a two rows of nine cylinders. It was an 18 two cylinder engine. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot, I think the, uh, I think a lot of the, uh, I, mm, I don't want to put out the wrong information, but I do believe. I know the P47, I'm pretty sure that uh, that used that engine. And I think the F4U Corsair as well was another one that used that, right. that engine. And actually, That's my the, favorite aircraft right there, the F4U. The, is it? Yeah. The wings are bent on them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's for prop yeah. clearance. Yeah, for yeah. prop clearance. Yeah, that, oh, if you ever saw the prop on that thing, I mean, I, I could stand on your shoulders, Philip, and it would still just be one blade. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I've seen those that four course blue one course there. And, and he said fact, you got to uh, stand on the rudder when you throttle up on it because mm -hmm. the engine torque could just twist that thing around. Oh yeah. You actually got to well, throttle down to turn left. It won't if you throttle up, it won't turn left. The engine torque will keep yep. it flying straight. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I was about to say with those big <laughs> radials. In a multiple bank, you know, 28 cylinders. Can you imagine the kind of torque force? Oh, man. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, it'll certainly twist your arm off. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know what I found? Boynton. You know what I found was the funniest thing when I was working on them? All right. You guys are all used to torque specs. All right. You pull yeah. open the manual. You want to torque something down. Yeah. Half those airplanes I worked on, here was a torque spec. Okay. Three foot breaker bar with a four foot extension on it and 180 pounds. That was literally an aircraft directive yep. torque specification. Mm -hmm. You know, and a clicker I'm, only. Yeah. You can't use an electronic in aviation. Oh, and, and the other thing is you can't jump on it either. It's hanging weight. Yeah. It's yeah. hanging weight. You don't jump on it. You'll over torque yeah, you'll it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was it, because back in the day, they didn't have a such thing as a torque wrench. It was about <laughs> how long the lever was and how much weight you had to hang on it. You know, and, and I mean, that's the funny or thing, too. Or the old too, needle ones. Oh, God, have you ever tried? Oh, man, I'm oh, a little guy, so 100 pounds. Yeah. I got that needle on there, and by the, you know, you're easing into it because you got to walk into the torque. Mm -hmm. That needle's going, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, man. <laughs> Give me a clicker. <laughs> yeah, you know, but guys, you know, when you, when you get to our age, it's easy. Or uh, sometimes it gets confusing too, because it's like, click. All right, was that my elbow, my back, or the right? <laughs> you always got to give it two or three clicks just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> my problem with the beeper ones, though, the electronic <laughs> ones, I've gone tone deaf. Oh, you're killing me. So I can't hear them <laughs> when they come up on torque and they beep. I can't hear it. It's it, it doesn't exist to me. Hey, mm -hmm. I'll be back in a minute. Oh. Or you got your torque set on there. You got all your buttons set, and you get on there and you torque one in. And you torque the next one in. You set it down and you move this over and you go to torque the next one in. And the sum of bitch is turned off. <laughs> <laughs> I hate an electronic one. I did, yeah. I've, I've actually, I've never used one. Uh, I don't make enough money or do enough work to invest into one. I'll put it to you that way. I thought I was high tech when I went from the needle, the old needle one, to the one that went click. I was like, oh, this is nice. It, oh, wait, that was my elbow. Let me try this again. <laughs> click. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Like the only that. time they're really important is when you're doing like stretch to yields mm -hmm. that have like those weird torque settings. You know, you torque at 90 and then yep. plus 90 or plus 45. Well, I just had the heads cleaned up on this and, and put them back on. And these Chryslers is like 109 foot pounds on the head bolt. I'm like, Jesus. I was sitting there just praying, please click. Hurry up and click. <laughs> 
big block board is 145. Mm. Okay, this the is head why... bolts on it are telephone poles. Yeah, this this is why I didn't do too many of the fours. Not only that, <laughs> but uh, my God, the FE just getting the uh, intake manifold off of those. This, yeah, I'm a little guy. All right, I'm a little guy. Not anymore. It, be quiet, John. <laughs> the, the mic is not muted anymore. They can hear you now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I yeah, well, Barrow, you know those old intakes on those old FEs. I mean, that's you, you're looking at. You're like, I'm pulling off half the engine, and it's ninety six and a half pounds. You almost got to use a cherry picker to pull them off. Yeah. yeah, you about do. Yeah. Well, I got a video doing it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any doubts, go back and watch that video. Oh my God. Yeah. It tore me up. Yeah, and now, I'll tell you. Setting it back down, definitely. Mm. Cherry picker all the way. Those some guns are so intricate. Yeah. Well, it's like this, this setup here, this tunnel ram and everything. I put it all with the carburetors and everything on it. It ain't light. <laughs> and then I had a, I had a, uh, a big block 440 tunnel ram that I put two um, demon carburetors on. And I thought I was going to kill myself picking that thing up because those demon carburetors are heavy. Oh, I love that tunnel ram on that big block Ford. Oh. I can grab it with one hand. I can pick it up. <laughs> that cast iron one that I pulled off of there. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Go to pick it up. <laughs> what I like about the tunnel ram is that if you want to, if you if you have to, you can hide the nitrous injection underneath <laughs> it. <laughs> and well, he's got it's one. It's like my fuel lines here. Hold on, let me spin this thing around. Or no, you back in the day we did a lot of sleeper out. stuff, and and a tunnel ram was how you did it. You, you put the nitrous injectors on the underside of the tunnel ram. You see how I have my regulator right here, and you can run into my yeah. fuel lines. I'm running the main line up into here and out the back to clean yeah. everything up, mm -hmm. and, and the, the hard lines running up to up on the firewall. Sweet. The way I had that it before, cool. I had two lines coming up and in, and I didn't like the way it looked, so I, I came up with this idea. I think it's going to work out all right. I'm doing something similar, but it's on the side. But it's following the firewall, just like you said. Because I don't like that either, where it drops down. Well, that was the thing. I was like, I ran it like you would normally run it, up here through the front, uh -huh. and then up, and, but it's like, I'm not. I'm running an electric fuel pump. I don't need to run all that line all the way up to the front like that. I can just go straight off the firewall. And that motor looks good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> and when it's down in that car, it just oh, it looks like something from Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> that was done. Mad right. Max, you got to have a blower. <laughs> Uh, the poor guy, the gentleman uh, that uh, that sold me my truck, and uh, he he's been into racing. He was into racing for years and everything. Uh, God, God bless him. Now he's gone, but um, uh, he was he was big into uh, actually he was big That's into Fords to begin with, and then uh, then he got into the Chevys and everything. But he still he also got into mobile. He got into everything, but this old truck, he had an air cleaner. It looked just like. Uh, it, all it was was just a straight air cleaner, but it looked just like the uh, the intake on on top of that engine. And he cut a hole in the in the hood of the truck because he was gonna just mount that just to mess with people. And he ran uh, a cable up to operate it and everything. Goes to go down the road, come to find out in Virginia you can't have anything sticking up over the hood more than two inches. Oh, I mean. So that's how my truck ended up with the hood scoop on it <laughs> to cover the hole he cut in it. But he had to get rid of it. Uh, that's yeah, like I'm, pushing it. I'm about two inches above the... the roof. My valve yeah. covers come out the hood. Mm. My tunnel ram, my, the tops of my air cleaners yep. are about two inches above the roof line. 
Oh, around here? Around yeah, here, if you, if you got a car like that, you might as well just drive it straight to the jail because that's where you're <laughs> going to end up anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll paint it black and white. I'll, I'll blend it in. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, My truck is painted black too. and white. That's that's the problem. That's why I can't have air conditioning. I can't be around a fan. Uh, if I do, it gets it going massive, and all I hear is just answer the damn phone, <laughs> just ringing big time. Yeah, I get I get the same problem in this year. I lost eighty percent of the hearing when I got my butt blown up when I was in the service and. Uh, and now it's just yeah, I get the only thing I can hear is I can hear some noise. Can't understand what anyone's talking about. And I can't even, you know, locate it. Be right here and I'll hear it better bounce off the wall. So I'll look look the other way. And uh and not only that, but like I said, that constant ringing. Yeah. That constant I feel ringing. bad because Big Mike's hoopty barn, he was actually on his way to Oregon. He met me in Pocatello here. And we went to a little restaurant and, you know, sat there. We visited for good Lord, probably two and a half, three hours. But I only heard about half of what he said because of that, all the background noise and everything in that restaurant. Oh, yeah. For a well, while, it's, it's just, I, it, it just a mumble. It's like right guess, now, uh, you know, my brother-in-law is sitting next to me. You, you guys can probably hear him over the mic better than I can hear him right here. I mean. Like I, I can hear his voice, but I can't make out a word he's saying. And uh, this does come in handy, though, when I'm with the wife and we're driving, because she's over here. <laughs> well, you know what? I, uh, I have selective hearing. I only hear the things I want to hear. <laughs> and like my wife, you know, God rest her soul. But uh, she would always accuse me of never listening to her or something like that. I, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention, you know? Oh, hey. Yeah. Now, I don't you, know if Max Wedge is uh, inside is on on that. Thank you, guys. Or if, or if he was actually blown up, too. And if you were, you know, that, that kind of ruined your whole day. I'm right there with you. Wow. My scoop is about four inches above the hood. <laughs> yeah, I might run into a, a few legal issues with this car. But it's an exhibition car anyway, so I don't care. And I can pull those big old air cleaners off and stick the little funky stupid looking ones on it and get into less trouble <laughs> you know sorry, my my brother-in-law has a question for y'all and sure. i i kind of think i already know the answer but him being from new england as well as me originally he wants to know if we have any celtics fans out there celtics yeah yeah, yeah see no Red Sox. Oh, Red Sox. You got Bear Rose here. Actually, and I'm a newly acquainted Padres fan. Oh, okay. Padres. Because their head coach is going to fire anybody who sits down for the or takes a knee for the anthem. Boom. I'm a Padres fan. There you go. You got me. I can get behind that. <laughs> here's, uh, here's how it goes here in Northwest Florida. You would think that people would be Seminole fans. But they're not. They're all uh, uh, University of Al Alabama, Crimson Tide around here. Mm -hmm. A lot of Crimson Tide fans. But that's only because they've, al they've always been the greatest team in college football. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and you're right I'll at tell the you what we do Alabama, have. Then. What we do have is we got a great minor league hockey team. Who would associate Pensacola with being a great hockey team? But we've got one of the best that there is, and they they win their championships. They're going back and forth between the town of Peoria, Illinois, in this minor league hockey. Mm -hmm. you know, so. 
Ours are the Idaho Steelheads. Steelheads. Uh, Boise. And yeah, they're they're a hot they're a team you don't want to screw with. <laughs> we can, we kind of get a reputation. <laughs> but do you know what it takes it usually comes to make a hot rink in Pensacola, Florida? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I mean uh, this this is no lie. My brother, one of my oldest brothers, I'm the youngest out of 16, but my one of my older brothers, he moved to Florida the day my mom went into uh labor with me. And I, I didn't see him till I, I didn't meet him until I was 10 years old. And uh, his uh, his oldest son, who is three years younger than me, they come up to uh, up to New England during the winter one time. Oh. The kid had never seen a frozen lake before. And we're all out, you know, ice skating and everything. And he was he was just dumbfounded. So uh, I'm kind of like, uh, do you know what hockey is? Well, I know what street hockey is. I said, yeah, well, we play it on ice. He goes, where? I said, right across the street, right next to my house. I have a pond. It freezes every winter. You can go on that? Yes, you can. But, uh, no. yeah, it, it's, it's just weird. And, you know, obviously, this is before the Internet. This is even before cable. All right, this is B.C., yeah. before cable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm originally from the Chicagoland area, and as a kid, we would do that. We would just pull out the garden hose and start flooding the backyard, <laughs> you know, yep. break an ice rink. And when the old man came home, somebody's butt was getting lit up, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but, kid, uh, there was a farmer that lived all the way up the end of the road. He'd plow out after he's harvested his spuds. He'd plow dikes into the dit into the field. And then he'd flood it and let it freeze over. Oh, we had a we had a huge ice skating ring. Mm -hmm. And I hurt myself all the time on it. I can't <laughs> skate. <laughs> oh my god! I remember I remember being uh, when I got my first motorcycle. It was a little Harley SX125, a little dirt bike. I, I know that. Yeah, I, I know that bike right here, trying to ride my dirt bike across that ice. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I made it across the lake, and most of it was on my side, sliding <laughs> across the lake. But uh, then, then my dad. Oh, you know that's that's one of the things about having parents back then. They really didn't restrict you. If you had a stupid idea, they were right there to support you. So, oh yeah, <laughs> we we put screws in one of my knobbies so I could get better grip on the ice. Oh yeah, yeah that that you know what that did? That got me up so I could get up to twenty miles an hour before I tipped over and lost control <laughs> instead of seven miles an hour. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's the kind of dad I had. If you was a little kid walking up to a wall outlet with a screwdriver, and mother tried to stop you, yeah, dad well, would say. What? Let him go. Yeah, He'll yeah. learn. Oh, He'll learn. Learn. <laughs> oh, my my nephew. My nephew's three years younger than me. One of them, anyway. I have over sixty. But uh, my nephew, when he when he was, he must have been about five years old. He took a key, and in the kitchen we had one of those oh outlets that when you're six years old, it's staring you right in the face with the happy faces mm -hmm. on them. You know, yeah, it even smiles at you. Yep. He he stuck that damn key in the outlet, and he's just standing there hollering. I'm only nine, okay? First thing that comes to my mind is, oh, he's getting electrocuted. Let me take him off. Let me pull him away. I grabbed onto him. I'm sitting there screaming. Yeah. My mother, God love her. What does she do? Her first instinct, grab the kids. So you got three of us sitting there getting electrocuted. Can't let go. My dad walks in. Looks at us, hits the off switch because it was a powered on off. <laughs> hits the off switch, looks at us and goes, "Y'all are idiots, you know that." <laughs> and those are the old ones. Those are fused. That ain't yeah. breakers. Yeah, no, no, no. It'll hold it, you there till the bill doesn't get paid. <laughs> oh, and especially this one because half those fuses in the house were quarters. <laughs> they, they weren't they weren't gonna go until, until the house burnt down. 
And a good old fashioned yeah. silver quarters, you know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see it or not. <laughs> They're still on there. Right there, you can see a little bit of it right there. Yeah. I got hit by lightning right in the back, and that's where it shot out of my hand. Ooh. Wow. I still got scar right there from it. I it noticed it shortened your lifeline on that hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, the next morning I went to put my work boots on, you know, the stitching around the sole. <coughs> I put my boot on and my the boot and the sole just boom separated. Oh, my, oh Jesus. It burnt all the stitching around my boot. All my toenails turned black. You know, <laughs> if we were in a comic book or a TV show, you'd have gotten superpowers. Yeah, that. I know I got wrong. <laughs> <Superpowers>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be able to see the future or something. Good lord! <laughs> but no, talking about talking about stuff your dad used to do. My dad helped me build a bike ramp one time that was about five feet tall, and oh, yeah, yeah, I jumped it and fell and about broke my neck. And he goes, "Oh, I knew that was going to happen." <laughs> like, Why did you have to do it then? We're supposed to blow it up. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my! my oh dad, yeah, father's my, that that was father's line all the time. Yep. He, he'd tell you, "I knew that was going to happen, but if I'd have told you, you wouldn't have learned nothing." No, you wouldn't have believed me. You would have done it anyway, and I wouldn't have been there to uh, make sure I didn't have to take you to the hospital or make sure you got to the hospital. One of the two. Not a hospital? If you can still walk, rub some dirt on it, you're all oh, right. Oh yeah, taking yeah. you to the hospital? What the hell? Well, that was when that I first was, started driving. Was some of the good ones. So, <laughs> when I first started driving, my first car was a 1968 Oldsmobile 98, big, huge luxury sedan, power everything, which was a luxury, you know, for 1968. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, the the power windows wouldn't work right. There was something wrong with the power windows. Mm. So I turned to my dad, who was a great mechanic and a guy that worked on cars. He had all kinds of hot rods and stuff. And I turned to him for help. And here's how he helped me. He said, you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, then I went back out there and started working on it. And I did figure it out, how those things work. And what you actually are doing is you're not turning power on and off to the motor. You're turning on and off the ground wire. Um, yep. Yeah. To those things. It's always got power. You're just changing the ground position so that the motor can run one way or the other. Yep. You're yeah, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Because uh, for years, we were trying to figure out how my nephew Claude, without touching anything, managed to roll his head up in the window when he was sticking it out the door. He had completed the ground circuit. Done somehow. that. Yeah. He had completed the ground because he never touched, nobody ever touched any of the windows, you know, electric windows. Nobody touched any of the buttons, but somehow his weight against it grounded the damn thing out, and up comes the window. And he's sitting there with his head stuck in the window, going down the highway 50 miles an hour. That That's a different kind of seatbelt. Those windows would cut your fingers off. They didn't care. <laughs> and Bear Rose, you can you can probably testify to this. All that old Lucas electrical. They oh, did a God, negative. Who? They did Breaking a positive ground. You know? And if Not you had an old draft motorcycle, all the electrical was reversed. <laughs> Not just them. Oh, and, and, and if you didn't know that, you screw it up. Mm. That's what happened to mine. It was sitting in the garage, and a buddy of mine had a Yamaha, and it was parked right next to mine, and he uh, needed to get his started, so he pulled my battery out, stuck it in his, and then he stuck my battery back in, but he hooked it up back normal. Up. Yeah, normal. Yeah. And it's normal, normal, and it blew my diode. The yeah. Very common on a Triumph. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zena. Not only that, but those Triumph motorcycles, 
They even put the shifter on the opposite side. Yep. You know? And to yeah. this day, I can't ride an American bike. Unless it's an old Harley. Because <laughs> yeah. Harley yeah, did an it old too. Harley. The Sportsters. Yep. Yeah. yeah. One, uh, two, two, two of my old sports, they were uh, right foot um, mm -hmm. brake, left foot. No. Right foot shift, left foot brake. That's right. Yep. To yeah. this day, I downshift every time I try to hit the brake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was used to that British oh, fire. Yeah. But them, them old Triumphs, they were cantankerous things. Just trying to get them started. They had these little ticklers on the carbs. Oh, my you God. What a mess those hit. things made. What yeah, a mess those things mm -hmm. made. Lucas carbs, yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah, I, Lucas is just, yeah, yeah. look, hives. <laughs> I had, uh, Lucas spelled backwards as headache. Is it, there you go. I had a 72 uh, Triumph 650. I got it as a basket case. It was a hard tail chopper. Somebody taken apart was going to put together. And I, I picked it up for, I think I picked it up for $50. He had just gotten so frustrated with it. And I, uh, I finally put that thing together and kickstart only kickstart only. But that engine, that engine had to have been worked on. Cause I will tell you what, I have kicked over some shovel heads that weren't as hard as that old Triumph, you know? Oh, and you had to watch it. Oh. I, I, roll it to it. Mm -hmm. And then you come on compression, then you hit it. Yep. But if you yep. get excited and you're boom, 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 that sucker will kick back and launch you right over the handlebars. Hey, my, my cousin's... Uh, oh, that hurts. 50, yeah, my cousin's 53 pan head did that to me. Launched me right over the front. And yeah. at, at the time, I weighed a whopping 105 pounds. Oh yeah, you know? me too. <laughs> yeah, and I that thing launched me right. I I never let go of the handlebars though, so I did a full flip over the front. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my I father... ended up standing up, but not not looking right because I'm still bent back, holding on to the handlebars. <laughs> I got the front fender in my back, and he's like, "You you didn't crush my head, my uh, front light." He had the front light on the front. I'm like. I don't think I did, but my tailbone, it sure crushed my tailbone. Jesus. Oh, yeah. My father had an old, uh, yeah, this when he was a young man. I can remember being a little kid staring out the patio door, watching him try to kickstart an old, like a 57 or 58 Harley CH. And they didn't have electric starters on them even then, mm -hmm. you know, in the late 50s. And uh, those CHs were... That was like the biggest engine that they had at the time, which is like, I don't know, a thousand or twelve hundred cc's or something like that. And uh, and the old man knew that you had to catch it on a compressor stroke, but still they'd they'd burp back and just throw you right off the dang bike. Oh Lord, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was uh, mine was a stock frame, but it had eight inch overs on the front. So it was the old 70s style chopper, mm -hmm. you know, real yep. high, wrote it like a triangle. Yep. And then it had the ape hangers on it. Well, they weren't real apes, but they were about shoulder, a little over shoulder high. I, uh, it was my dad's bike. I bought it from him and he rode that I thing. Had one, uh, uh, I came across a basket case bike. This guy started, what he had done was, uh, he tried try to chop out an old CB750 Super Sport. And I ended up finishing the project. I got pictures of it. I'll, 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 uh, I'll send them to you let, you, let you see those. It turned out to be a pretty cool bike when I got done with it. The rake was like at 45 degrees, Ooh. which was too much for the shock absorbers to actually work. Yeah. You know, the yeah, forks were, were just laid out. They kind of bend <laughs> up instead of. <laughs> going in and out yeah but, uh, it hey, was Lord, a cool looking bike far. i even put a cb put a girder. front wheel on it and it was uh it was a cool looking old it was a chopper bike with a cb 750 super sport engine on it you know yep. it was a cool looking bike 45 yeah, that's almost too much for a springer you got to go with a girder for that yeah 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 oh lord <laughs> are we running over on our time no <laughs> no see 
Oh yeah. 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 yeah, we're fine. I've, I've been watching <laughs> that. That's been showing the same time for months now. Yeah. <laughs> About seven years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't think I didn't notice. The clock that matters is the one that Brian's got over there. <laughs> Did I ever tell you what happened to me at No Name Nationals when I drove this thing out to take the picture? No, what's that? I put like, I put like two, three gallons of gas in it. And you know, uh -huh. I started, got out and I started up a few times. And I drove it out there to take the picture and I ran out of gas. I'm like, <laughs> damn, you didn't that much gas? How did that happen? Well, William come out of his cushion and bring me some gas. Well, later on, I'm, I'm walking around the car like the next day or so. I'm walking around the car and I look and I'm like, well, hell, because of the rate this car has, it's like this. Hold on. It's like it's like this. So all the gas is up at the front of the tank. And your pick up. And the pick and, and, and the stuff. And the. Uh, that was at the back. I'm like, wow, well, I probably got three gallons of gas. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to level out the gas. I've got to level out the fuel cell. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I can. Hey, I just got bit by my cat. No, don't do that. Oh crap! Jeez. Speaking of cats, I know it's dark out. I need to go get my cats in. I need to get them in the house. So I'm going to have to. Say good night to all y'all and, and let you go. All right. All Great right, seeing Phillip. you, Philip. Great we'll Phillip. see you guys Great later. To you, sir. You're more than welcome anytime. Yeah, it was awesome uh, trading some stories and everything. But of course, I, I already warned you. You know this. And anytime I get on, I just I yak <laughs> too much, and I'm sorry about that. No, nah, you're perfectly good. If not, you watch me stumble around trying to get that screen share thing to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, speaking of which, uh, uh, if, if you can remember, uh, talking back when you when you got on here earlier, uh, we were talking about getting your channel up and everything. I watched you over on John's channel, too. Uh huh. And um, yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, what you were saying with your your tags and everything. Uh huh. And, and uh, that was what tube buddy. Yeah, Too that's funny. the one that I use. I like I said, I ran with the free one for a long time. Yeah, yeah well, I, I think try that out too. I'm gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna download that and everything because uh, it really helps. That, yeah, when you pull that screen up, I'm like, that looks very familiar to what I use, but I don't have the tag options or or any of that other stuff you were showing. And uh, that's why that's why I was glad that uh, um, Dust Devil asked you about that too. Because I, I was getting ready one. to type, but I hunt and peck. It would have taken me 10 minutes to type in the question. It only gives you like three or four options, but there's a trick. All you got to do is keep refreshing it. You hit that little refresh button, and it resets them to different. I, I did that you. for about a year. There'd be times I'd be over here, refresh, 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 <laughs> refresh. Because <laughs> it'll come up with off-the-wall wacko tags. And but, you um, don't want to use a bad tag. If it, if it don't pertain to your video, don't put it in there. Gotcha. Gotcha. But I also wanted to say if anyone's still out there that was uh, asking about, you know, uh, there was a couple people asking, well, how do I start and what do I do and everything? And, um, well, it all, it all depends on what you want out of it as well, too. I yeah. do this kind of as a hobby, and I enjoy doing it. Um, I don't take a whole lot of time editing or, you, you know, I don't want another job. I do it as a hobby. But All my editing, I do all my editing in about 10 minutes. I'm not it's that It's all just <laughs> basic. I mean, super basic editing. I got yeah, you. you but tell when, I mean, I'll watch my videos in the end. Uh, I'm my own worst critic. Didn't you use to use the same editor I did, Bear Rose? The, just the one that came with Windows, yeah. but then it went away. It went away. They put they added ClipChamp into it. And ClipChamp, I don't like it as good. 
I don't know. I've actually started to really like Flip Champ once I started messing with it and figuring stuff out. It's kind of neat. It's fun. It's fun if you want to spend time. Yeah, I've been I've been using it's, it's the Kind Master. Good. I've been using Kind Master because honestly, I mean, I have a video camera and I have a laptop now. Ninety nine point nine percent of all my videos are off my phone. And Kind Master is the easiest one to use that I found. Yeah, as, that works for you, brother. Go for it. On the phone. And that's that's what I was going to say. You know, there's a lot of free things out here. And if you have a smartphone, um, go out there and make videos. That's it. Give it a shot. And um, it's real easy to upload on YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, they have a little, a little uh, on your phone, they have a little plus at the bottom. You hit that and it says, do you want to upload a video? Do you want to make a video? Do you want to make a short? Do you want to upload a short? Yes. Here you go. And it's real easy. It really is. Um, My problem is, is my screen is cracked and it's got welding pits in it. I don't know if you can see them. The big old oh, yeah. shatter right there that runs right across there. And it's right where if you're scrolling, you know, to edit on your phone, it'll yep. get to that crack and go. <clears throat> yep. And then I got to bring it back and it'll touch that crack in the screen and go. <clears throat> yep. Ah, I get so frustrated. Well, I just finally it. bring it in and I do it on the computer. I got gotcha. you. I got you. I just my hands are too big. My hands are too big. To, my fingers are too big to do anything on the phone. <laughs> exactly. I I, I get working on that. Little... No, I used to do all my filming, but then I got I got that GoPro ten, and I I, saw, I love I love that thing. Yeah, I, um... days I want to get a GoPro for action shots. Oh God, they're great. I want to get one because I've got that harness bar in this, and it's pretty much I think it's right at the right height. That I could put a mount and it would show everything that's going on in the car and out the front window. I actually have a pair of glasses that has the uh, video camera, the camera in it, yeah. and it's it's got the uh, chip in it too. Um, and you can get the different size chips and everything for longer. The one I have right now is only good for about thirty minutes, but uh, and I've used oh, that's them plenty good. Yeah, well, I've used them twice because. Um, I'm terrible with glasses. That's why I have these uh, fold away ones, you know, that uh, <laughs> that I can keep safe and just carry around in this little thing because I'm terrible with glasses. I'll take them, set them down for two seconds. It's worse, worse than a 10 millimeter because if they don't disappear, I'll sit on them, step on them or throw them on the ground, you know, and it's... Uh, they are cool, though. They are cool. I, like I said, I've used them two two times. Um, and the, the video only thing I don't good. like about them is the audio is not that great on them. Well, the, the audio on this, um, I'm going to put it to you this way. It has a heck of a mic. And because it has a heck of a mic, it it'll pick all the back. everything. Yeah. Everything. When everything. I'm in the shop and uh, during the day when I'm filming, I've got these little guys my little wireless ones and they're only 30 dollar wireless ones they're they're cheap they're super super cheap ones but on the top it's got its own mic that you can run mm -hmm. or on the side you can plug in a lavalier when i'm out in the shop i got semi trucks roll <laughs> there's actually a way a scale right across the street from me oh okay so I got semi trucks sitting there idling coming down off the hill with their Jake brake on. But if I plug my lavalier in and it'll cancel all of that background noise. So all you hear is my voice. And it very, very little in the background. But when I'm filming, I hear that like booming in the shop. But when well, I do it in the video, you hardly hear any of that. Yeah, You can't tell in the videos. You can't tell in the videos. Um, obviously I, if you watch some of my videos between the dogs, the neighbor's dogs, and the airport that I live next to. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, either one of them, it'll be quiet all day. Nothing going on until I start making a video. Dog will start barking. I think they coordinate. I think, I think one of the neighbors actually has um, 
direct connection to the airport and his dog. <laughs> That's just never ending. Yep. And if I'm outside working and my brother goes by, he drives for a trucking outfit just up the street from me every time. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, hi, Josh. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's how family is. My uh, my nephew and Rob, I got train tracks runs right in front of the house here too. So I got oh, a lot of noise. <laughs> my shop is really loud. <laughs> yeah, I got trains real close. Like when I used to do a lot of lives from the shop, you'd hear it. But yeah, when I moved into lives. this room, you could really hear it. Everybody on the lives, they go, oh, there's the train again. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. I don't live that far away from the uh, Richmond uh, Raceway either. And uh, when they come down, you can start hearing them on Thursdays when they have a race uh, weekend. You can, you can hear them on Thursday, Friday, you know. And uh, uh, that, that's one of the noise. It doesn't bother me, you know. The dogs, the aircraft, and even the cars going up and down the road, that annoys me. But I'll sit here and it just, you know, it, it's just background noise to me. It doesn't bother me. It's it's funny how it's funny how the mind works, you know. Yeah, Phillips got the perfect ground out there. Oh Lord. I love this looking out looking out his place. All in trees. I want something 14 like and a half acres. Oh, when I retire, I just want to go to some. I want some property in the woods with a big shop, just where I could just do this stuff. Out in the county, no city, no nothing, no, no town to deal city. with. All that crap. Got your own septic, your own well. Yep. I gotta give you some more of that. When we was looking for property, that was specification. That's how we ended up here. <laughs> that and a whole bunch of blind luck. It's it's funny where uh, my house right now, where the way it's set up uh, between the shed, which is only three hundred square square feet smaller than my house, and I have a three bedroom house, and uh, but the roof the roof lines I got because everything's shaped like an L it'd be perfect for solar. It really would. And I, I checked into it and I love to do it. I can't do it because the uh, airport won't let me for the a reflection. Fact, yeah. Um, I'm in two flight flight paths and they won't let me. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't have a whole lot of trees here either. So maybe when, no, I'm in a bird sanctuary. They won't let me do that either. Wind yeah, is so un, unpredictable, though. Oh, I know it, but you know the way I'm looking at it, any anything would help if it's you know the initial price would be affordable, of course. Yeah. I don't want to wait 30 years for it to pay itself off. But um, but yeah, I was thinking uh, between, you know, I would like to uh, I'd like to live in a place where I could uh, have solar, have wind, and maybe have some uh, uh, hydroelectric. <laughs> You know, any anything, because something's going to be running. Even if it's not running everything, it's going to help. But then again, I like backups, you know. I, I like having a backup plan for everything. Backup for a backup for a backup. Yep. yep. <laughs> kind of like I was talking the way I want to uh, uh, plumb my fueling system so I can use the electric uh, fuel pump that's in the tank or the manual or mechanical, I should, or mechanical fuel pump and, you know, not use them both at once, but one or the other. Um, and it, it, I should be able to do that. I don't see, I don't see a problem other than me just having to plumb a couple extra lines to the tank and the tank is plastic. Well, the thing is like with my fuel pump on here, I pull through, you can pull through my fuel pump. Yeah, I'm not. I I'm the not sure one, if it's this, a little if, difficult because the mechanical won't pull through the electric. Now, if you have a rotary pump, electric pump, and did away with your 
stock in tank one, mm -hmm. your mechanical yeah, yeah. will pull through your rotary, not a clicker. Yeah, I've got, I've right. got, well, I don't yeah. know. It's, I think the one I got to rotary, it's, it's, it's the Holly, Holly blue pump. Yeah. Yeah. That's a rotary. When you turn it on, it goes <laughs> all the time. Yeah. That's a rotary. Why it quieter when it runs out of gas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it does. It, it, when it runs out of gas, it's quieter. No, that was another thing with the rig. I had to when when whenever I unhooked all the fuel lines, I had fuel pouring out of the the main line because the ads end was up higher than when it was up here. I had to hang fuel lines over and <laughs> so you use gravity in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of dogs, these two are mine that are barking right now. And and the louder one is just a little tiny beagle. But um but my motorhome is set up that way. It's got an in tank one, but if the electric one dies, the mechanical can't pull through it. So oh, that electric okay. one's got to be going. And generally oh, speaking, it's the electric one that's going to die. The mechanical ones tend to keep going and going and going and going. Well, not only that, but, you know, it's two bolts and 20 minutes worth of work to swap it out. And it's easy enough to carry one behind the seat of the truck or somewhere. So you have it available. Um, I got if I put that 2000 pound camper in the bed of the truck. Um, that leaves me with the one choice of drop in the tank, because the last time I changed it out, I just got a hole in the bed. And that turned that two and a half hour job into a 15 minute job. But if I got the camper on there and I don't have the jacks for the camper with me, which I don't normally take, I'm stuck dropping the tank or getting the thing towed. I, and that was the problem with even the, um, um, oh, the uh, throttle body. You, you can't gravity feed that thing. You know, even with the carburetor, there's a third option. I can get a gas can strap it to the roof of the truck, run a line to the intake on the carburetor, and gravity feeds the thing till I get out of the woods or get get home. Lord knows I've done that before. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm the idiot sitting on the roof of the car, straddling <laughs> it with the gas can <laughs> <laughs> while a friend is driving us out of the woods. Oh, years ago. done that. Yeah, years ago, me and two of my friends uh, were in my folks' van, and the fuel pump went out in the backwoods uh, up in New Hampshire. And we had about six miles to go before we could even get to a store or anything. And uh, we had nothing with us. We had a bunch of empty beer cans. And we had a, um, uh, five gallons of uh, pre-mixed fuel for the boat we were using. And uh, what we did was we took the doghouse off. I had one buddy sitting in the passenger seat. And he was literally cut the top of a beer can off. He was dumping fuel into the carburetor to get us down the road while the other guy kept filling up a beer can so we wouldn't run out of gas. And yep. And that just, window. Yep. You just, just handing it to him and uh, we got it. We got it down to the uh, auto parts store, got another fuel pump for it and put that on. Shoelaces for a throttle cable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've used speaker wire before. Uh, or I used speaker wire for windshield wipers before. Oh, <laughs> now that's what I use the shoelaces for, the boot laces. <laughs> I have, I have done. Oh my God, that just yeah, I forgot all about that till you mentioned it. Yep. Now what's funny is I had the ballast resistor go out on my satellite one time, and I was in the middle of nowhere. And I actually, if you look on the Chryslers, they're, um, Two, or they're four, wiper four motors. Five. the wiper motors have a ballast resistor on them. Yep. So I just took that one off and used it and it got me home. Yep. What year yep. did they start using the four prong? And that's what it was for. The, it was like both those combined into one. Yeah. The four prong, I think was like 73, 74, maybe. Because I, I need two of them. The electronic ignition, they started using the four prongs. You know, believe it or not, my old uh, 74 Harley Sportster, 
right behind the battery where the battery went in and it took the big battery just like the flh full dressers did i mean that that thing was almost a car battery um that had actually had a ballast resistor in the ignition system um and uh i actually i had dual points on this bike the engine had been built and uh I, I fried the points on it. No, actually, I didn't fry. I blew them up. I, I over revved that engine. I was pulling about 7,500 RPMs. And uh, uh, there's a little bolt that holds the, uh, the whole ignition plate into the side. And that broke and everything kind of went out on the highway on me. Yeah. And uh, then I went to electronic ignition. Uh, an A cell electronic ignition on it, and that got rid of the ballast resistor for me. But yeah, I, I went through two or three ballast resistors on that uh, on that Harley too. All these people, you know, they get scared about doing a twelve volt conversion on a six volt, but you can actually use those ballast resistors on all of your, uh, like an old car that's six volt. Mm -hmm. Just run a ballast resistor to them all. It drops it to eight volts and it'll run on eight volt. Yep. Uh, the big one is windshield wipers in a Mopar. Because Mopar went electric long before anybody else did. That's how I got them to work in that 53, 52 Dodge pickup. Just stuck a ballast resistor in there for the windshield wipers. Otherwise, it will run on 12. It'll run just fine. But when you turn it on, Wow! <laughs> <laughs> the blades right off. <laughs> but a uh, six volt motor is wound so tight for the for the amp load because six volt runs on enormous amps. Mm -hmm. it, they'll handle twelve volt no problem. In fact, the starters work better. Oh, you can definitely hear them. You, you you can when you uh when you hook a 12 volt uh battery up to a six volt starter it's kind of like instead of it's ring ring you know just oh that thing takes off i've started a lot of six volters that way you shut everything off mm -hmm. shut all the headlights or boy they get bright <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shut all the electric off and then fire it over on 12 or even you bounce if you got a charger like mine you can bounce it to 24 and hit it mm. i i i learned that when i was but that's watching. the purpose for negative ground or positive, positive ground. ground it actually gives the distributor a harder spark right at the start that's why they kept it that that's why europe kept it for so dang long well if if you if you actually get into the way um uh, DC current works, you know, everybody's like, all right, it's negative ground, it's grounded to the frame and everything. So the positive side, you know, all the electrons go out the positive side and they go right to the component first. That's not the way a battery works. Battery, no, the electrons go through the frame, go through everything else that's grounded, and then into the positive side of the battery. Um, they don't go from positive to negative. It goes from negative to positive. And there's a reason why, and it was due to Ben Franklin, and, and pardon me if I don't remember the whole story, but that's why this is set up backwards. If it, if Basically, Ben Franklin was wrong when he was figuring out electricity. He was wrong. He, he was 180 degrees off when he was uh, figuring it out. Otherwise, if he'd been right, literally our negative side of the battery nowadays would be marked as positive. And uh, I don't know exactly how true it was, but it sounded good. And it was on PBS. So it wasn't <laughs> what I saw on it's YouTube. Be true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it wasn't on YouTube. It was on a PBS program. Now electricity does travel that way. Yep. What really gets goofy is then when you go to AC, AC has no ground. It goes both ways. That's this alternating current. Mm -hmm. It flows that back. That ground lug only goes to the breaker. Yep. That's what makes the breaker blow. And that's uh, unlike a battery, you know, you can grab anything hot as long as you're not grounded. Uh, AC, look, even if you turn that switch off, one side of that thing is hot all the time. You know, I that's mean, why you got to be careful with these electric cars. Oh, 
that well, you're dealing with some massive direct amperage and massive I'm voltage. I'm not cut the wrong wire. That's yeah. direct current. It'll hold you there until it, you, it, it's, it's done. Until the mm. battery's dead. Oh yeah. I remember when, uh, I remember when they first started, uh, it'll light you on fire. Then it'll light the car on fire. <laughs> I remember when they were first uh, coming out with the, uh, well, it was starting to get common to work on the HEI ignition systems, you know, 60,000 volts and everything. And uh, a few of the old mechanics, you know, I grew up with and everything, they're like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm there with the test light and a, a spark tester and everything. And like, I'm looking for a short. I'm looking for a bad wire or something, you know, and he goes, you ain't got to do that. All you got to do is grab this. Well, he grabbed that thing, man. Oh, it lit him up so bad. <laughs> There's still a guy here that he just retired. His name is Steve. Uh, he on first service station. That's how he checked Spark. Yep. He would just reach down. HEI, it, it didn't matter. He just, all right, that one. Um, um, all right, that one. I'm looking at him like, oh, my God, are you crazy? I know <laughs> what you're to do that though, Ooh. they'll just grab the wire and be like, Oh, that's 110, oh, that's 220. Yeah, they get shocked so much it doesn't even affect them. Yeah, Not I'm, me. Uh, no, I've been shocked here. enough, I don't want it no more. Yeah, same here. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that lightning strike there that, <laughs> that, that probably filled you up for the rest of your life. There, you know, that was uh, instead of having a bunch of little shocks throughout your life, you got it all done at once, and that's it, no more. No, I had to double it up again. Oh, jeez. We tore up in a in a parking lot at the cruise because I was the last generation that actually had a cruise where you show up on Friday and Saturday night and just drive your cars around up and down mm -hmm. the street. Well, we yeah. was in a parking lot and we needed a nice, quiet, dark place to drink our keg of beer. So we pulled the uh, big street light pulled the cover off, pulled the wires out, and whoop, undid the wire nut, pulled them apart. Well, it was also a lot of fun to get in a shopping cart. This was before Jackass. We were the originals, Dad. Yeah. I had a leather jacket on, so I was safe. There you go. Jump in the shopping cart, and you get behind it with a square body pickup, Chevy pickup, because that bumper just fit per. This is not, the, if you do this, you do it on your own accord because I almost died. So take that into consideration. But that Chevy pickup bumper fits right on that shopping cart. Perfect. And you get hauling ass across the parking lot and then the pickup veer off and you just flat fly across that parking lot in the shopping cart. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, I was headed straight for Chris's, a good friend of mine's just had it painted pickup another square body go figure and that light post was right there Ooh. i reached out and grabbed a hold of that light post and i hit both those wires come to find out that's 480 yeah it don't let go no. <laughs> it absolutely don't let go but because of that i also know that leather doesn't conduct the electricity yep friend of mine got running he went he thought i was joking around he said what's wrong with you what's oh, oh fuck he's getting shocked <laughs> he's dying and i was dying <laughs> he got a run and jumped and grabbed a hold of my jacket and dog pulled me off of that thing yeah i was hey. done though i was out i was oh. good lord the stupid things and again I almost died, so don't do it. <laughs> yes, this is not an instructional this, video. This is not an instructional video. This is an <laughs> instructional video on how to meet St. Peter. <laughs> yeah. Hey, give me give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. And the only safe way to meet St. Peter is if you're doing over 120 miles an hour. Because if, if you meet your maker at 120, you'll skip through them gates so fast he can't check your ID. That's it's I'm my at. only hope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was oh, that was a crazy night. And boy, when I came to, oh, I had so much adrenaline going through my body. I was Superman and I was 10 feet tall. 
and well, I already you, had a half a bottle of Captain yeah. Morgan in me. So, you grow up in a small town. It sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm. I miss that living up here. Four hundred and seventy-four people. Oh, we had a few more than that, but the cruise was at the city, thereabout. Well, back then it was probably about twenty-five thousand. Yeah, we used to just go out and cruise Main Street, and mm -hmm. if our Main Street was dead, we'd go over to the next town because their Main Street wouldn't be dead. Heck, we'd drive three out, two and a half hours to the big city, Salt Lake. Sometimes, just just for the heck of it, drive around, show off your car. It was. And, and you pick up the occasional race on the back street in Mexico. <laughs> well, I think I think that's going to happen again, but in a different way. Make 10, 20 bucks a night. Yeah, I did that a lot. I predict I predict in the next 15, 20 years. With the self-driving cars, the insurance is going to be so outrageous if you want to drive your own car but i also predict that a lot of these people a lot of these racetracks and everything will incorporate stuff like they'll have where you can do everything at the racetrack they'll have a cruise where you can cruise your car around if you want to drive it it'll be like it's kind of like horses you know you people, uh -huh. people don't ride horses anymore for transportation but Still, people own horses, and they have special places where they can do the stuff with their horses. It's kind of going to be the same way with these old cars. We're going to have special places where we could cruise our cars around, or race, or whatever. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't really see that much of a problem with it. Well, I'll tell you what, my prediction in the next uh, twenty years or so is that. Uh, you're going to see the three of us sitting in our uh, customized wheelchairs with the Harley engines or whatever on it, cruising around. Oh, yeah. yeah. I keep telling Dad I want to take that rascal of his and put flames on it. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there this year, Bear Rose. I, was, I went everywhere. It's all unknown in, on, 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 in my mom's mobility scooter. Oh, I drove all over the place. I've got something I'm thinking about buying for a pit bike. And uh, hopefully hopefully it doesn't sell before I get the money because it'll be a fun one. At one time, I was actually looking at those little pedal car kits that you can get from Speedway. You can mm -hmm. buy just the body from them. And they look like a little 32 Ford or whatever. They got all kinds of pretty cool little body kits for those little pedal cars. I was yeah. thinking about taking one of them and making a rat rod go kart out of it. Have you ever seen? I've seen quite a few of them, but I finally found one in my price range. It's a three wheeled vehicle and it's got a fiberglass body where you got the two wheels back here and just like a lawnmower engine runs it. And it's it's raked out like a chopper. Oh, that's a dune cycle. Yes. Yeah, we used to have those. Yeah. Yeah. That's the original three wheeler. I found the original one, ATV. I found one for four hundred bucks. Oh, grab it. Town I Take a four forty snow machine engine on it and hold on because <laughs> god dang it's fun. <laughs> I'm just thinking about using just a little Briggs and Stratton that's on it and use that as my pit bike. Yeah, they got like a little eight horse on them. Yeah. Four and it's all centrifugal belt drive. I can always like get one of the for a Predator motors. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play the monkey bike rules, which kind of sucks, but I still use it for a pit bike. And if we I had one, and I may, I may race William and his Cushman. We put a Yamaha 90, my, my old dirt bike that I wrecked. <laughs> it was so beat up that it was, it ran. But it, it, it was so beat up, it was gone. We took that motor off and stuck it on one of those dune cycles. That was fun. Oh, God. 
stuck the shifter right between your legs. I want to find some street tires for it. You know how it's got the knobby tires on them? Yeah. The I want to find some street tires about that size. Some that looks more like a street tire to put on it. If I get it. I'm sure you could find them. They make those that size of tires for uh, like your side by sides and stuff, and they make street tires for those. Yeah, if I quit spending money on finding cool shit for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, keep buying cool stuff for this thing because this is damn cool, man. <laughs> well, that's one thing, and it, it, it kind of sounds ridiculous every time I say it, but. With the AN, the AN uh, radiator hoses, that's uh -huh. gonna up, that's gonna end up costing me about four hundred. Oh yeah, radiator, Oof. radiator hoses. Yeah. So, but damn it, it, ain't nobody else gonna have them. <laughs> I'm never gonna be the fastest guy out there, but I'm gonna try to be the coolest. The there you go. Out. Set your goals. Set your goals. You're just gonna run water in it, right? Yeah. Or are you street driving it? No, no. This one, this one's not street driving. I'm kind of one. When I get my seventy-one satellite back, I'm kind of thinking about building some building it like this, but for the street. You kind of want the street freak thing to be my uh, my signature. What you ought to do is like I'm doing with my two fifty-eights. You set up the other one. So you can haul it, haul this one behind your satellite. That would be cool as hell going down the road. I've already got an idea for that. Do you ever watch um, Junkyard Digs? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Did you see that Dodge Ram truck that he's got? Yeah. And he did, never got it running? He wants $5,000 for that thing. You remember those two Ford Fairlanes I told you about that I could get for 2500 bucks? That you haven't got yet? No, I haven't got them yet. I'm thinking about getting those. I'm thinking about getting those and trading, talking to him to see if he wants to trade those two cars for that ramp truck. It's just getting that big thing from Iowa to here. How it's far away a, is that? About six hours. Six hours? I was almost thinking about getting the transmission and fixing the brakes and just doing it out there. And filming it. Do a Stephen Holtz. That he yeah. loves doing that. You only need front brakes, right? Oh heck. Yeah. Is it a standard or an automatic? It's automatic. <laughs> oh man. It's automatic. I should only need front brakes just to get it back to it, it yeah, I, I don't think I, I, well, actually, I think I can speak for the three of us. I'm pretty sure we've all done something like that before. You know, well, in his video, he had the thing on a 30 foot trailer and it hung about eight feet off of the trailer. Oh, so it's like, I don't know how I would transport it any other way besides going up there and getting it running. I ain't paying to have the thing hauled here, you'd have to haul it with a semi. Yeah, no, oh, I got pee. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, we'll wait for you. Hold down the fort. Yeah, we'll try. Oh, but that, that is a beautiful engine you got going on there. Yeah, I'm trying. Like I said, right now, the bottom end all stock. Oh, okay. But I'm going to hopefully change that next year. Or I got a 440 block over there I'm going to build to put in this next year. I haven't decided yet. What are you running for compression on that? Oh, uh, like I said, it's stock. It's probably only eight to one compression. Oh, okay. So well, you... was, was, was throwing a fit because I'm running a tunnel ram on the stock. He's like, oh, it's going to be slow. I'm like, I don't care if it's slow this year. This year, this year, my goal is to make it down the track. There you go. Last year. I want to make a few passes with it down the track. If it's slow, it's slow. I don't care. It's still going to look cooler than 90% of the gas stuff out there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. It is pretty. It is looking nice. Wow. Anybody say anything in chat? Oh, there's Kim. How's it going? Well, 
What are you running for a transmission behind it? 727. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I got I got 488 gears, so anything I'm lacking in torque, I should be able to make up with multiplication in the gears. I got you. Oh, man. What time is it getting to be? It yeah. is. Yeah, it's getting to be 10 past 9. And, uh, yeah, when Bear Rose gets back, I didn't I didn't want to be rude and cut out right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to take off, too. I haven't eaten anything today. Yeah, well, my, my work day starts at 3 in the morning, so I'm, I'm kind of cutting into my bedtime at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky I work second shift. I get to wake up at the crack of noon. Oh, there you go. There you go. So you'd uh, you'd just about be uh, be having about two more hours before you got off work, then. Well, let's see. I get I, I get off at twelve forty-five. So oh, a little bit. Yeah, I all right. Go, I usually don't go to bed till around three a.m. I got you about the time I'm getting up. Yeah, yeah. When you're when you're waking up, that's when I'm going to bed. Yep. Oh, good Lord. Well, hey, um, you know, I was talking about that purple engine. If if you like the purple, I think you might get a kick out of it. Uh, you know, check out my channel sometimes. There's plenty of pictures of it. Yeah, out. what is your channel? I need, to, I need to subscribe to you. Sidewinder? Yeah, Sidewinder Shed spelled with a Y. And that was that was one of the topics that they were talking about. If you spell it, spell your name weird, it's hard to find, which is true because, uh, this will send you to a lot of snake channels. Yeah, it, but, but also, I, I don't know. Once you get a few more subs and your starts going up to where it's easy to find, then, because Wilbur said you hit a thousand, it's easy to find. I, I, I find it that whenever you hit about two or three hundred, your, your, your name starts getting easier to find. It does. Easy. It does in a way, but this is so close to, uh, you know, uh, the way you're supposed to spell it. I found that YouTube does almost like an autocorrect. And if, you, if you're if you not paying attention when you type in Sidewinder with a Y, it'll pop up on the screen as Sidewinder with an I in it. Yeah. I've noticed getting into, if, if, if you find like with the stuff you do, if you find like, I don't know if you're on Facebook, but you find Facebook groups that are kind of about what you do. And then they usually don't care if you throw your video up on there. And that, that helps get you some. Yeah, I've, I've done that too. Cause yeah, I'm also on Facebook. Yeah. But the problem is it's like, I've got a Facebook page and I've got 3000 followers on my Facebook page. I can't get those people to come over to YouTube and subscribe to me. <laughs> yep. Yep. I understand that. If I could just get them to do that. I'd be doing good. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. And uh, anyway, yeah, this, this year too, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to finally get the time and get the, uh, get that engine swapped over in my truck so that uh, we can take the camper and head on up to uh, No Name Nationals. Yeah, it'd be great. Oh, it's a great time. You wouldn't believe it. it's a great time. And camping out at the track is what you want to do anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, the camper um, is a home-built camper, and uh, it is it is um, uh, fully self-sufficient. You know, I mean, it, I got... Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I got fresh water tank in it. It's only 25 gallons, but I can also hook up to uh, any shore shoreline or anything or just fill it up when I need to. Well, they got, they, they, they got water there. We had to fill my mom and dad's up last year. Oh, they that's where they'll let you fill up. Yeah, it's, you know, it's got a shower, uh, got a toilet in it, um, got everything. I did not put a stove in it because I usually uh, just cook out on the tailgate. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's got everything in it, um, and uh, it's small. It's small because it fits in the bed of the truck, so it's only eight feet long and about six feet wide. 
But, uh, you know, the wife and I, we're at that age where when we go camping, we actually like to still get out and do things and yeah. not just be, you know, not just be sitting in a, a luxury uh, camper, not that anything's wrong with it, but we haven't reached that age yet where we feel comfortable just staying, going out someplace that looks nice to do things and then just spending the whole time in the camper. You know, well, yeah, that's like what we did with uh, my mom and dad. They had their camper. We popped out their awning and then put up our little pop up awnings all yeah, around. Yeah. Everybody just sat there and hung out the whole time. Oh yeah, and that's what I was thinking about. That I'm trying. I'm trying to think of a couple different things. I, I, I like the idea of the slide in campers or going to a bed of a truck because I'm looking for a way to still have the camper but be able to tow the car well honestly check out check out my channel on the camper it uh -oh. might give you some ideas because it is a hard-sided pop-up as well so when i'm traveling it's only it's a few inches low. yeah it's only a few inches above the uh top of the roof of the truck and it's uh it doesn't hang out but uh about two inches on either side of the truck so it's real small and pretty much anywhere I can take the truck without the camper, I can take the truck with the camper. And yeah. I can still tow a trailer if I need to. You know, of course, this, this is a pretty heavy, heavy truck to begin with. But, um, and yeah, and then when we stop and we want to go camping, I have four uh, electric uh, linear actuators. I just push two buttons and it raises the top up. Well, and I've been looking at motorhomes, but all the motorhomes I find anymore, they're all Fords, and they all have those track and V10s in them. Oh, yeah. And I've had bad luck with those. Ugh. Stay away from a Triton. That's what our whole fleet was whenever I worked where uh, I worked with my dad at this basement waterproofing place. And they bought a bunch of old U-Hauls with all those track and V10s in them. We had none but problems. Damn thing spitting spark plugs out for no reason. <laughs> yep. And what or bad what? it's not an uncommon thing because you can go to the parts store and they make a piece to fix it. Yep. Yeah, I, I just oh, and I don't remember whose channel it was. I just watched the video on that. And it was uh, it was a short, and actually it was on Facebook. But uh yeah, they just had a little uh reel up about uh one, he yeah, was complaining about it, and then two, he was showing how to fix it. It's a piece That's a of very, piece very common thing on them. It's just a bad design, and they use oil pressure to push the timing taint chain tensioners, and mm -hmm. it's got a 10 mile long timing chain on it. Mm. Oh, yeah. And the timing chain tensioners are freaking plastic. <laughs> <clears throat> chain plastic yeah so all and that the, plastic falls that files off and goes down into your oil yeah. which does what plugs your oil pressure so that slacks and then pretty soon you get what's called the triton slap mm -hmm. uh, there's also that piece in the back that controls the uh fuel idle control valve oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but the thing I was lucky about is when they go bad, the trucks were van front end, so you just pull the doghouse off. My buddy had one go bad on his Explorer or Expedition, and oh my God, I don't know how he reached it to get back to it. Oh God, it's important. I'm a little guy. I got little arms, but I, I got a special wrench. It's a little stubby 10 millimeter just for doing that. You got to climb. I, I swear it's mounted to the rear hitch, and you got to go through the radiator to get that god dang thing. <laughs> and you got everything, and then the EGR valve is right there. Mm -hmm. You can barely get this finger on it and you break it loose. And, oh. Well, that's all right. I know you've pulled engines out of a van before. Making sure that none of them show up every time I start talking about a damn Triton that shows up in my yard. <laughs> imagine, imagine a Triton V10 in a van 
pulling the engine out. Ah. I had to do, I've, I've done, I have personally done like seven of them. I got good at them. But it ain't fun at all. At all. Do they still do the dropout um, core support? It's all bolted in place. They so pull the radiator and that section yeah. of the core support comes out. Yeah, you got to pull the whole front okay. end up. And the core support comes out. Mm. It's bolted in. But then you've still, only got, you've still only got like three or four inches. Yeah. You got to put a cherry picker in there on a, with a, one, on a modified one of those carburetor plates to bolt down. You got to pull the intake off. And I modified one of those carburetor plates to bolt down inside the engine. To get the cherry picker to come up high enough to just barely get the engine out and back in. I pull the chain hook off my cherry picker and then run it through the snout this way just so I get that extra inch. Yeah, that, that's what <laughs> I have to got it. I, it's starting to hurt. <laughs> I'm yeah, thinking I, about that shit. You know, I was I was gonna say the same thing and I yeah. haven't had to do one of those. But uh, just just listening to you, yeah, I'm I'm starting to feel the aches and the pains right now. <laughs> well, on the bright side, if you ever buy a motorhome, a Class A motorhome, you know the full bust ones, mm -hmm. I can pretty much 100% guarantee it's the original motor because nobody's dumb enough to pull that son. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not it ever blew up, they left it. <laughs> I pulled this engine out. Was because I was gonna. I'm, I'm putting a different valve body. I'm putting a cold valve body in the transmission. Well, I think. Did you see the front of the car? Yeah. You can see. I cut the core support on this. It's easier to pull the engine and transmission out together on this car than it is to climb underneath it and pull the transmission. Out. Mm. <laughs> that's somebody that's had to pull an engine in a van, right there. See. Yep. <laughs> well, you think about this stuff afterwards. I know it's a race car, and there ain't no tell them what engine, transmission, whatever I'm be putting in and out of this thing over the exactly. years. Exactly. So that just makes it easier. If I would actually bring the bumper and everything off, you hardly got to lift up on the engine at all. And yeah. it's a lot easier with a tunnel ram when you can leave the tunnel ram on there too. Are you it, making all your motor mounts and bolts and everything the same size too? Oh yeah, I did that. I followed the bell housing. Mine are five eighths, so every bolt on that is five eighths. I can get that sucker out of there. Oh, and the trident. Why would you have studs? What is it? Was it studs on the flywheel <laughs> and nuts instead of bolts going in? That's Ford all the way through for the Ooh. torque converter. Yeah. Oh. Oh my I God. crushed a pump. I fully admit it. Oh, it's just get that angry. heavy transmission up there and get it started. Okay. And you're, and you're trying to balance everything and it's trying to fall off the transmission jack. And so you just grab the electric and you wind one in on the bell housing. Oh, yep. I made that mistake. Four transmission so heavy, too. Those four overdrive transmissions weigh as much as the engine. Yep. I could pick I could pick this 727 up and put it in the bed of my truck. I ain't doing that with one of those Ford overdrives. Went around to the front of the engine to turn it over so I could line up for the torque converter. Uh, Grabbed a hold of that and uh, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Take it all back out and that torque converter come up and just crush the pump when I squoze it together like that. Just dumb, being dumb. All right, well, I'm going to jump off here. I'm going to run home and get something to eat. I haven't had anything to eat today, so. Yeah, I better, I better yeah. do the same. Yeah. yeah. Hours. When, when, when you went to the bathroom, we were talking about that. I said, yeah, we, we got to let Bear Rose get to bed. We got to, we got to, <laughs> we, we kept up. He, his intention was to come in and do a short little video after you got it done with John and, here it is two and a half hours later. That's way it goes. Well, I'll, I'll take fault for that, too, because every time you let me on here, this is what happens. And I'm sorry about that. 
Yeah, you're more than welcome to do it. Otherwise, you leave me up here to try to figure this stuff out and bounce. You leave me rambling, and good Lord, I don't know what I'll ramble about. <laughs> when, I get on, when I get on Tony's lives, I usually keep him up to I keep his lives going about eight hours. I think you guys got the record now. Good Lord. All right. Well, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you later. All Thanks right. Thanks you know, for coming in, Brian. Coming out. And Kim, yeah, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to let you go, buddy. You have yourself a good night, and you take care. And thank you again no for problem. letting me on. No problem. You're you're more than welcome anytime. And this, uh, I, I think I'm going to keep this trend going. It's it's the whole reason I started the pickup lives because I used to do pickup videos to try to, you know, share some of the stuff I learned from Buzz and all of these guys to try to help any of you. I think I'll keep the theme going here for the next couple of months. First part of the live, we'll, I'll do little segments on yeah, just passing off some of the stuff I've learned to help you guys out and uh, get your channels up and going. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. I do appreciate it. I might not follow it because, like I said, I don't want a second job, but I do appreciate <laughs> the uh, I do appreciate the information. Hey, I appreciate everything. I want to get do. you to the point though that eh, you're at least getting a nickel or two for here and there. Yeah. <laughs> you know sometimes i think more people would be willing to pay me not to put any content on <laughs> now nah, keep it coming brother keep it coming all right buddy well thank you so much and have a good night great you seeing you. Take care. everybody in the chat thanks a million for coming out uh i know this one was kind of ramble bamble jumbled together but uh well, we'll, uh, we'll do it again next uh, next week. I'll, I'll pick a topic. Or if any of you guys, when I throw my invite up, any of you guys have any questions whatsoever on your channel on how to, how to help get it going, by all means, hop in. We'll talk it over. Uh, I can show you a little better with examples on here maybe. I'll, I'll just do anything I can to help you guys out because I want to see you all succeed. Anyway. Thanks a mil for coming out, everybody. And we'll do this again next week. Till then, get out there and uh, get some metal hot. And I like that one, Kim. <laughs> Hush money. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>